Hey there, welcome to my studio here in New York City. I'm Daniel Norton, photographer here, and we are gonna talk photography today. On this channel, we talk about all things photography, philosophy, technique, business. This one's gonna be technique. I was asked on one of my other product videos if I could talk about shooting something with more dimension, like a hat. So instead of just shooting it on white, like we have been doing for some of the stuff to kind of just showcase selling online, I'm gonna shoot this one a little bit in an environment. You could do it on white as well. It would also work. Now. <laughs> I don't have a lot of hats. Now, I don't often wear hats, but I do have this one uh, from Dato Light. So I got this when I went to Dato Light to talk about lighting a few years back. They had me come to Germany, which was a great honor. And I don't wear hats that much, so it's still in pretty good shape, but it's not brand new. Obviously, if you're photographing stuff for a catalog, try to use a new thing. If it's something for used, because I have got some comments about that, like eBay and stuff, you want to make sure that you're showing as much detail as possible, do close-ups, stuff like that. So anyways, I'm gonna show you how to set this up. We'll set it up very basically, and I'll show you how to tweak the lights beyond kind of the automatic settings to make it have more dimension. Before we get into that, I just wanna go over the lights really quickly. There will be a link in the description to all of this stuff. If you are looking at it, you wanna get more detail and stuff, but I'm gonna talk about what I have and why I'm using it. The camera behind me is my normal camera, my Nikon Z6 II. It's got a fixed with a 24 to 120 lens. There is no particular reason why I'm using this setup. If I was doing a lot of product photography for print, I'd want some more megapixels, so I might jump up to like a Z9. For the web, this is more than sufficient. And yes, you can do it with an APS-C camera. You just wanna make sure that you keep as much detail as possible. What I mean by that is when you're looking at your histogram, you wanna have as much spread as possible. You don't want it to be too crunched in because you lose a little bit of detail sometimes in those cameras, especially at high ISOs, but that's not gonna be a problem because we're using flash. We're using Profoto B10s, which are 250 watt second flashes, and each one is in a softbox. One is in a three foot octa, Parapop from Glow, and also by Glow, a 40-foot square. The 40-foot square has a grid on it. That's gonna give me some control to give me some depth to the image. And you'll see, as soon as I shoot with the grid, you'll see what it looks like. Let's take a second to talk about composition. If you want something, to, like we do with a hat, to feel kind of, kind of like the somebody wants to come grab it, it's in an environment, try to put the camera around your a head height, right? and with the angle of the product so that it's like you're standing there looking at it at a table, just like I am here. Obviously it can be higher or lower depending on what you're working with. If you have a low shooting table, so you drop the whole thing down. But the idea is that we want the viewer to feel like they're looking down at the hat and they're gonna grab it. The other thing is this particular hat has writing on it, not really anything else, it has a little design. And for that reason, I'm facing it this way. So we want the beginning of the word to be closer to the camera. So I've tilted the, the image. You don't want the, the back of the word to be in the front because it'll just throw people off. It's a psychological thing, but it's important. So we frame it up because I do have an environment as it would up to seven on a piece of wood because I thought it'd be interesting. I'm going to make sure that behind it and in front of it, there's nothing weird that's cut off, right? I don't want like the edge of the wood in my shot. The sides, in my case, are not super important here, but if you did a very specific layout, like square or something, really be aware of that when you're laying this thing out. All right, so we're gonna start with this light, which is our key light. Again, it's a 40-foot square, and it has a grid on it. I'm gonna place it slightly in front of, but to the side and over top of the hat. I'll show you. I'm using a C-stand here, which allows me to boom it out a bit. This is not tremendously heavy, and it's over a table, so, I'm not worried too much about it tipping over, but if you're using something heavy, make sure you put a nice heavy uh, sandbag on there. Okay, so I'm gonna put it over like this. Remember, in lighting, we generally want our light to be close. In this case, because of the way I'm setting this up, I want the center of the light to be more or less over top of my image, but I want, as far as uh, back front, but up down, I want a little bit more on the bottom than the top. And the reason for that is because I want to light this side of the scene a little bit to give my viewer some direction. So let me show you what this looks like. Okay, I'm tethered in the Capture One here, so we'll see right away what we get. I'm gonna set my camera at the proper settings so that the space is dark, basically, right? We've done this before. Effectively, if I don't fire the flash, what I will get is a black frame. That's gonna be important because, again, we want all the light in the situation to be our own. I may want to close down a little bit more beyond where I normally would here, just for depth of field, but we'll see. I really feel like the whole hat doesn't have to be in focus as long as it doesn't drop off dramatically and just not look good. So we'll take a look. So I'm at 7.1, let's just go to eight. I'm at eight, I'm gonna be in TTL, that's through the lens metering. 
I'm gonna turn this light on, which is in my A group, and I'm just gonna let it make an exposure of what it thinks is correct. So again, I'm framing it up, I'm gonna look, I wanna be able to read the text on the hat. Okay, we're probably gonna have to go in there and mess with the hat a little bit. I was moving everything around. <laughs> So basically we want it to have nice dimension to it. What we want to do is set this thing up and then not touch it again, ideally. Okay, there we go. We can see a few things here. Number one, even though I said, don't get this background in there, right? So you see that, but that's not great. The hat's dented here, so we don't see all the word, which is a problem. And of course it's very contrasty and a little bit dark. So that's again, our initial shot. Now, before I add the second light, which is gonna take care of a lot of these problems, I will take care of the compositional problems. Number one, in order to get rid of that background, what I need to do is either go up higher and tilt down, which I don't really think I want to do, or I need to back up a little bit. So I'm going to back up, and I will then move the hat forward again to get my composition back where I want it. Okay, one thing we can do here when we're doing our composition is I can actually do the live view on the camera and adjust as needed. Now obviously this is not exactly the light we're going to get, so we have to be wary of that. I went up a little bit higher because I thought it would look a little nicer. And I think that's a nicer composition. So let's see, we can see that again, we want dimension. So we're gonna let the hat have some shape to it. We just wanna make sure our logo and everything is gonna get all the light we want. Okay, so we can see again, it's a little bit dark. The TTL is not giving us the exposure we want per se. I'm gonna go a little wider in frame. So now before we decide to mess with this much more, I want to now bring in the second light. The first light is not exactly in the right spot, but I want to add my fill light because I can really get a better sense for the object. So I'm going to basically put it not across from the other one, but kind of in front, right? Almost on access, but slightly to the side. So I'll show you. Okay, so I just placed it there and I took a flat shot and we can see we've lost all the dimension. While the first shot was too dark and maybe not very nice, this is just lacks all dimension. What I'm gonna do here is move the camera so you can see better, and then we'll keep going. Okay, so we're gonna, you can see how the lights are set up. Got this one right here, this one right here. I'm gonna turn off the overheads and on the modeling lights so you guys can see what this looks like. Okay, so obviously we can see there's some daylight coming in here. Again, that's not gonna actually affect the shot, but just for the point of showing you guys the modeling lights, we can see how it's lit very flat. Well, that's because obviously the model lights are even, right? But we don't need to make the flash even. So if I kill these modeling lights and I think to myself, I want some dimension. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take what is my key light and I'm gonna make it a little bit brighter so I can have some light. So, the, so there's a, the light feels like it's coming from someplace. And when I do that, I'm gonna then turn down my fill light in equal amount because I know that the exposure I have, the amount of light I have is exactly right because I have a nice, flat, boring picture, right? So we can jazz it up by just changing the proportions of our two lights. So this light over here is the A. I'm gonna, that's the A group. I'm gonna bring it up a stop and a half. And on the B group, I'm gonna bring it down a stop and a half. So this should be the same amount of energy, but it's distributed differently. And we can see that immediately it's starting to look better, right? We already have some shape to it, and we can continue to work this more if we want. I can see a couple of things. Number one, I feel like that the light from the key light is a little bit uh, too far back, because I want to get a little bit of a vignette. That's the reason why I put a grid on it, right? So I'm going to move that forward a little bit first, but I'm not going to change any power settings. I don't need to change power settings because basically the light is in the, sa the same distance from the subject. It's just, again, lighting it slightly differently. So let's, again, see. We may have to adjust it, but we'll start here. Shouldn't have to. Okay, you see how we're getting that now? We have that little bit of vignette going on, right? So this is pretty good. I still think it's a little flat. So I'm just gonna go in again and take my A light, which is the, the key. I'm gonna switch everything to manual. And I'm gonna raise that up a stop. My B light down a stop. Hopefully we'll get this done before the police come. Do not know if you can hear that or not. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, see how we're getting some more contrast. We're starting to see texture. I feel like the, the, the hat itself, first of all, it's a little dirty. Uh, I'm gonna actually turn it a little bit. This is one of the reasons why it's nice to have a stylist, <laughs> but we don't have one. So if you're doing this on your own, it is possible. It just takes a little bit of effort to get yourself set up. I'm feeling like even though we definitely wanna see the whole word, it doesn't have to be 100% flat to the camera. I think that will work pretty well for me. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I think it's not quite enough. I'm gonna do a final uh, touch up on the actual hat. And from there, I think we're gonna be good. Okay. Depending on what the situation is with these hats and stuff, if you've got a brand new one and it's for a sample for photography, you definitely can use things like spray starch and stuff. Just be careful that you do not uh, stain the hat in a way that it'll show up in the photo. I'm gonna turn this back on so we can see. Because obviously we can see that my hat's older and we can, you notice, right? Cameras don't lie, right? It can see every little bit. There's like a thumbprint there. So I'm just gonna turn it so I can see the words data light. Go like that. Like that. That looks pretty good. And one final thing I wanna do here because I didn't really 100% love the way the fill light's catching is I'm actually gonna move it a little bit more forward. So again, keeping it on the side, but moving it more forward. I want that background to fall off a little bit dark. There we go. You see how we were able to pull in detail. We have this framing. I would love for the bottom part to vignette a little bit too, which we might be able to do by adding something in between. If you thought there wasn't enough detail over here, we could probably add a fill card or something. So let's tweak this a little bit more because you know, we can always tweak product photography. So we've got the hat back in the middle. We can read the entire word. We see the dimension here. There is detail in this dark. I mean, if you wanted to go in here, this is what I was talking about earlier about the different kind of cameras. If you're using an APS-C camera, you might want to flatten this a little bit more. But if we look at my camera, you know, at being a uh, full frame camera, I can easily bring back any of that detail, right? So I'm not really concerned that it's shadowy. I want the shadowy. If anything, I almost want a little bit more pump over here in the highlight. So I will make a couple final tweaks. Okay, so I basically gave myself half a stop more light, but then I closed down the lens a little bit too, just to get a touch more focus. I would just want to make sure that the hat, you can see it's getting soft back here. That's fine, that's the back of a hat. And it's slightly soft here, but that's good. Why well, you can see all the little dust and stuff on. <laughs> this is why you want to use a brand new hat. But basically you get the idea. We have some dimension, this could be on anything. You know, maybe it makes more sense if it was on some kind of camera bag or something, right? But basically it could be on anything that you want that makes sense for your project. I hope that was helpful for anybody wanting to shoot something that's more dimensional and you wanna see how to kind of mix your lights and ratio them. A lot of it is feel, right? But the basic concept here is use your two lights, effectively what we're gonna call it a one-to-one -one ratio. So you have enough light to make a flat image then start raising one and lowering the other to build that contrast the way you want it. If there are areas that need it, give it a touch of fill with a reflector and you're good to go. If you like this content, please do like the video. If you wanna see more stuff like this, subscribe to the channel. There's lots of it on here. Also check the description. As I said, all the stuff I'm using here will be listed down there with links. You can also find down there a link to my Discord server. You can sign up over there, join the conversation, and also a link to my Patreon if you wanna support the channel. Thanks so much. I'll talk to you soon.